All right, uh, let's see. Let's tune into CNN if they're covering it or not. Uh, you, Netanyahu's warplane is out. It's in the air. Drones are on the way. Uh, we'll see to what happens. Israel. And and so we have a president and an administration that has tried very hard to keep this conflict from widening out. From uh, the moments that October seventh unfurled, uh, they have tried very hard to keep this conflict from becoming bigger. Uh, as you're alluding to there, uh, this really raises the risk of the conflict spilling over and getting much larger. What can President Biden and his team do right now as they both s signify uh, that they will be standing by Israel as an ally and doing, and, and as Jake Sullivan said, ironclad support for Israel, but also trying to keep this from widening out? Sure. Well, look, it, it looks like they've been doing all the right things the last few days with regard to talking to the Israelis. I assume sharing intelligence, talking to Arab partners as well in the region. We got to keep in mind they have vested interests here, but they're doing all the same things that I did, that my colleagues did when uh, the Trump administration faced off against Iran in late 2019 and early 2020. I think it was very prudent to move destroyers uh, into the vicinity. They have very great anti-missile uh, uh, and other anti-drone capabilities that would help Israel shoot down any incoming attacks. And again, if it's cruise missiles or, uh, or drones and ballistic missiles, it's such a far distance we can see those and track those, and it'll make them easier to shoot those down. So I think a big part of it now is, if this is real, is to shoot down uh, as many, if not all, as you can. That, of course, um, you know, if there's, if there's little damage, that gives... Really According to Elint News, we have six hours for the drones uh, go all the way over to uh, go all the way, make it all the way to Israel. Iraqi security officials have confirmed that dozens of one-way suicide drones have been detected over southern and eastern Iraq after entering via Iranian airspace and that they are heading west. Um, so let's see where this goes. Okay. Yeah, fun day is over. Uh, sorry to everybody that wanted a fun day. Here it is. These drones will likely take many hours to reach Israel if launched from Iran. If cruise missiles are used, they are likely to be launched in the coming hours as they take a few hours to reach Israel and then ballistic missiles will be launched last if they are to be used and they take less than 10 minutes to reach Israel. Video retweeted by OSIN account. Unknown drones over Diyala Governorate, Northern Baghdad. I don't know what's happening uh, there. I don't know the ver I don't know if that's a real one or not. But will the Turkish US bases will drag Turkey into it? I mean, we'll see. Depending on how depending on how Israel retaliates because remember, Israel is uh the country that bombed technically Iranian soil in Damascus in Syria by bombing the Iranian consulate compound. This was a direct violation of international law. This was a direct violation uh, and also a major escalation in this conflict. It's not about Israel showing restraint. It's about what America does. It was about what America does uh, from the jump. I talked about this extensively yesterday. The fact that Joe Biden, after October 7, gave a bear hug and no red lines approach to Benjamin Netanyahu caused Israel to feel like they could do whatever they wanted and they could very easily bring israel uh bring america into the conflict okay and they violated numerous red lines as you guys know uh both the ethnic cleansing in gaza but beyond that way more uh severe red lines that they uh that they violated such as striking beirut lebanon uh not just southern lebanon but straight up striking beirut and then another red line uh when they struck the iranian consulate uh and the um the the iranian consulate compound in syria in damascus beyond that obviously there were uh, uh, of course locations that were uh, uh, attacking americans versus the iranian proxy groups in both syria and iraq that is uh that is the norm just like it was the norm for hezbollah to strike targets in northern syria versus uh, Israel striking targets in southern Lebanon. But there were moments where Israel went above and beyond in the most belligerent fashion, likely escalating the tensions in the region and likely creating more destabilization with the hopes that they could bring the United States of America 
into the conflict directly. Benjamin Netanyahu's plane is already in the air, by the way. This is an amazing story by Tal Shalev. Ahead of a possible attack from Iran, Netanyahu moved over the weekend to a house to the house of Simon Falik in Jerusalem, which according to the previous reports is a fortified bunker. Falik is a U.S. billionaire, a GOP donor, and the owner of Duty Free America. Netanyahu stayed at his house at the beginning of, or of the war after rockets were fired on Jerusalem. It's 1.13 a.m. They tweeted out a few days ago that the attack would happen at 1.12. I mean, sure, that's, uh, you know irrelevant in my opinion all right and which earlier tonight updated its guidance uh, to israeli civilians limiting public gatherings in northern israel as well as uh, the israeli communities surrounding the gaza strip also closing schools uh, for the coming days but it does now appear as we've been anticipating this potential iranian response that we at least now know uh, the first chapter of that response and the form that it is beginning to take uh, we also know that israeli government officials in recent days have been warning that an Iranian attack from Iranian soil onto Israeli soil would result in a commensurate Israeli response, meaning an Israeli attack on Iranian soil. So uh, we will have to see how this all plays out, to what extent Israel is able to intercept those drones using its air defense capabilities. Uh, a lot of questions, but we are starting to get the beginning of the answers in terms of what exactly uh, this Iranian uh, attack, uh, what shape it is beginning to take. Yeah, what it might look like. Okay, Jeremy, stay with us. I want to go back to Mark Esper for a second because, Mark, we're kind of digesting what Jeremy is just telling us now. And I, I want to get your take on a couple of things. First of all, this uh, the fact that it's going to take several hours for these drones to get there. What does that mean in terms of being able to shoot these down, to prepare for them? Uh, what does that look like? Sure. It's, it's not difficult to shoot the drones down. Uh, you, you know, they launch dozens because some will malfunction en route. Some will get lost. You want some to make their way through. But if this is really an Iranian full-throated attack, they would phase it in. So uh, all missiles, uh, uh, so, so everything uh, hits their targets around the same time. So at some point, they would large uh, launch ballistic missiles. Uh, it's worth noting that Iran has the largest and most diverse ballistic missile force in the region. And it's probably their singularly best cap conventional capability. But they would launch ballistic missiles at some point to time... Um, uh, with the landing of the cruise missile, with the cruise missiles and drones, and that would only take a matter of minutes for ballistic missiles to get there, probably under 30. And then, um, look, if uh, they can really get their proxies on board, you'd see uh, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon launch thousands of the, what, 150,000 rocket and missile inventory they have in southern Lebanon. You'd launch all that at the same time, and the purpose would be to overwhelm Israeli air defenses so that some of the either rockets or missiles or drones or ballistic missiles will make their way through and hit their targets. But again, if that happens, I, I can't help but think you're looking at, at the beginnings of a major regional war. And, and we have to just take a beat, and, and you've said this, and we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but I think the other, the other thing that, that Jeremy mentioned was uh, that Israel had said it will respond in kind to whatever Iran ultimately does. And you can't help but realize that we're teetering right on an edge here, Mark, and that we are at this very precarious moment uh, where President Biden and his team uh, are facing what could not just become an experience expanding conflict, but a, an incredibly serious one that you're kind of laying out before us right now. Yeah, look, it's not unusual that, again, it, it may just be a limited attack of cruise missiles or drones at, again, an Israeli outpost or command post in the Golan Heights. Whether they hit or miss, the Iranians will privately claim victory to the Iranian people, and they'll privately convey messages to Israel and the United States that they're done, they're through, they made their point. And, and that'll be the end of it uh, to some degree. So, you, you know, there are a wide range of things that could happen here. And as I said earlier, this could just be one aspect of it, too. They could go after Israeli embassies abroad, um, you know, to, to, as another mean to kind of inflict the punishment they want. This is a country that goes eye for an eye. They're going to want to attack a like target with a like outcome. What happened is... What do you mean, go for eye for an eye? It's just like that's the norm. Liners in Iran enough to establish and they haven't gone eye for an eye uh, at all as a matter of fact if anything they've been infinitely more restrained than Israel Israel is the one that has escalated over and over and so, over again uh, it'll be very interesting to see how they're walking this tightrope here as the uh, following hours unfold yeah and let's go back to Ben Wiedemann who is there in Beirut 
Uh, ben, as we talk about the potential for this conflict to widen out, I know you've spent a lot of time there uh, in the last six months as, as the Israel-Hamas war has played out. Uh, and also, we've seen a lot of action there at that border. Uh, what do you know about, about the potential for this to widen out and, and what's happening around where you are? Well, there's real potential for this happening. Now, what we've heard from, close is very, from sources very close to Hezbollah, which of course is allied uh, with Iran, is that this is re Iranian response to the Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus was going to be, and now we see is, strictly Iranian, that Iran's allies and proxies in the region weren't going to participate in this. It was going to be an Iranian strike. However, the same source told us that if the Israeli response escalates and that the situation deteriorates, that Hezbollah and other allies and proxies of Iran across the region will come in to support Tehran. So really, I mean, as I was saying before, this strike much anticipated the Iranian response, much anticipated. And as we're hearing from uh, Israeli military spokesmen, it's going to take hours for these drones to actually reach Israeli territory and the chances of them inflicting any serious damage are relatively small. The question is, how will Israel respond? We've heard Israeli officials say that if the attack comes from Iranian soil, Israel will respond on Iranian soil. So there's a real danger of escalation uh, now, as <clears throat> your previous guest was talking about. This is the first time Iran and Israel, or rather Iran, strikes directly at Israel. A threshold has been crossed. Now it's up to the United States what do you mean? and others Israel's perhaps crossed. to Israel try crossed to the threshold. rein in the situation. Now one cannot Biden help is in but the think situation room. that similar to the aftermath of the American assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in January in 2020, the Iranian response to that, the Iranians warned the Americans it was going to come, and it would appear that. In this case, given all of the sort of indications we're getting, President Biden returning urgently to the White House, is that perhaps messages were passed from the Iranians to the Americans that this was coming. So there are channels of communication open uh, between Washington and Tehran, and those will be critical to avoid some sort of escalation that ends up being a regional war involving Israel, Iran, the proxies and allies of Iran, and perhaps even the United States. Jessica? And on that note, let's go out to the White House where Kevin Liptak is standing by. And Kevin, I know you just reported that the U.S. officials have officially confirmed that Iran has launched those, dry, those drones toward Israel. We know that the president has ended his weekend in Delaware, is on his way back to the White House. He is meeting with his national security team there. Uh, what more can you tell us about what they're going to be uh, doing there? Who's meeting with him in that situation room? And also, I told you, by the way, that they would stop saying this is retaliatory the moment that the drones were in the air. And uh, approximately 23 minutes after the drones were in the air, they've already dropped the whole pretense like why Iran did this and are reframing the narrative as Iran struck first. And you will see red lines are being crossed by Iran against Israel is the standing meta standing narrative so quickly did it change yesterday i told you yesterday that this was going to happen and it's already happening apparently what a second drove uh state link media reports second wave of drones launched at israel state link media in iran is reporting that a second wave of drones has been launched by the islamic republic at israel yep israel has a right to defend itself is going to be the meta again all of the principles in the american uh, national security establishment you know uh secretary of state antony blinken lloyd austin jake sullivan all of these officials uh, arriving at the White House soon for this very high stakes meeting as these drones make their way towards their target. Now, we did know from American officials ahead of this uh, occurring that they had detected Iran moving military equipment within its territory, including drones and cruise missiles. It wasn't clear at that point whether that was a deterrent posturing or whether they actually intended to launch them from their own soil uh, into Israel or towards Israeli targets. 
That is now uh, becoming clearer. We also knew that the American military was repositioning its own assets in the region in part to help Israel shoot down uh, anything that was fired its way. And so as the U.S. watches in real time as these drones head towards their targets, they will certainly be hoping to, to intercept them and, and help Israel in that way. That has been President Biden's key message uh, over the last week as he talked about this significant attack in the offing was that American support for Israel would be ironclad despite his current differences with the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's essentially said that that wouldn't get in the, in the way of American support for Israel in the case of Iranian reprisals. So certainly the U.S. watching this very closely, but also watching very closely what Israel will do next. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Mark, I want to go back to you because you've been in that room. You've been in the Situation Room as a former Secretary of Defense during the Trump administration. Uh, what, is, what is that like? What are, they, what are they considering right now? And what are they watching for? Yeah, I think when they meet with the president, of course, they'll be giving the best estimates of what the, the Iranian uh, so attack cocked. line looks like, what they may be going for, anticipated battle damage assessment, things like that. Uh, of course, uh, Lloyd Austin will be speaking to his counterparts, not just in Israel, but again, Arab partners are really big here. They matter. Their views matter. They're going to be concerned about not just the Israeli response, but what uh, the United States will do. So you've got to be speaking to your Arab partners also. But then I think at some point, uh, you know, once uh, there's more clarity on what happens, the outcome on the ground, uh, talking with the Israelis, what will the U.S. do? What will the U.S. support? Will the United States uh, put more forces into the region to uh, to support Israel or to, you know, backstop U.S. forces? So we're not at that point yet. I think at, right now what they have to see is, see is what is the extent of the attack? What What's the likely damage, the outcome? Because those two things will have a big impact on how Israel thinks through a response, if any. Uh, to this, um, what looks to be an unprecedented Hezbollah Iranian attack. Hezbollah declares the start of operations against Israel. And just Israel to bring everyone in, again, in on Iraq. our breaking news, Iran has launched an attack against Israel using dozens of drones. We are told they have launched those drones from Iranian territory. It could take several hours for them to arrive at their destination. I want to go now to Clarissa Ward, who is live in Tel Aviv. Uh, Clarissa, as all of this is unfolding, what are you learning? Well, obviously, this is unprecedented and unnavigated territory. There are very high concerns about the number of different scenarios that could plausibly play out here. We have hours until we expect those drones to be entering Israeli airspace. The question becomes, will they potentially be accompanied by some kind of missile fire from Iranian proxies? Obviously, the IDF and Israeli government taking this very seriously. Schools have been closed. Gatherings of more than a thousand people have been uh, forbidden at least until Monday. And so everybody here is sort of grappling with what exactly to expect. On the one hand, Iran very clearly clearly telegraphing its actions. And so in that sense, it seems to be positive. They're looking for potentially a sort of Goldilocks approach, if you like, trying to retaliate without escalating into a full-on regional conflagration. Uh, at the other moment, though, of course, there are high tensions, high fears, because we are entering sort of unnavigated territory, because there are so many different possibilities as to how this could potentially shake out. And so a sense of high alert, I would also say calm, but definitely everybody watching very closely to see what will be happening in the coming hours as we anticipate the arrival of those drones. Israeli sources tell the IDF military radio that they believe that the Iranian attack on Israel will also include uh, cruise missiles, intercepted they believe. intercepted or shot down, but the real question becomes whether there will be some sort of supplementary force as they get closer to Israel, Jessica. Right. And Clarissa, before I let you go, you've covered this region for, for many, many years. And you're talking, and we're, our other guests are also uh, alluding to this as well, kind of this unprecedented moment. Can you give us some context about what it means that Iran is launching these drones uh, toward Israel from a, a Iranian territory? Just kind of give us some context around that. 
Well, the context of Iran launching an attack directly on Israel from Iranian territory is something that we haven't seen in decades. And that is why you are seeing a lot of concern, a heightened state of alert, why you're seeing President Biden coming back to the White House, because everybody is aware now keenly that this could develop into something dramatically more serious. At the same time, I do think it's important to underscore that Iran has been very clear and has telegraphed that it will uh, meet out a retaliation for that attack on the Iranian compound, the diplomatic embassy compound in Damascus on April 1st. And so some are extrapolating from that, that by telegraphing it so clearly, Iran is trying to find that precise point. And this is where it gets dangerous no, and difficult. She's when doing you're trying it. She's to doing a decent job. Spot between escalating and retaliating and avoiding creating a scenario that you can't pull back from the brink of, there is always the capacity for things to go wrong. And that is why there is so much tension. That's why there is a high degree of anticipation, even though this moment has been expected since April 1st, Jessica. Right. It is a razor's edge. All right, Clarissa, stand by. I want to go to General Mark Hurtling, who's joined us as well. And General, we just heard Clarissa really lay it all out there. Uh, as we await these drones in their travel time, we see how uh, Israel might respond um, as it does take hours for them to get to their final destination. Uh, but also broadening it out a little bit more, uh, Israel has promised to respond in kind to whatever Iran uh, ultimately does and however this unfolds over the next hours or days or however long this might go on. Uh, what does that say to you and, and, and what do you think that could potentially look like? Dude, if I'm a rapture enjoyer, evangelical, I'm so horny right now. I'm like, oh, the end of times is here. You don't know how many aircraft are in the air. It's slow moving and it's developing. But I'd suggest that that's just the first of many actions. There could be the potential I'm like, for I'm, I'm losing my mind. Slow moving Going, drones, this is it. Jessica. It's happening, finally. About the, 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 the speed of a Piper the red heifers, baby. A Cessna aircraft. They're just very slow, 150 miles an hour at best. So they're going to be supplemented from, I think, from uh, attacks from other directions. Hezbollah is going to step up their actions, although even, even while we haven't been watching what's been going on in the northern part of Israel as much, the Israeli Defense Forces have been reporting multiple attacks on a daily basis uh, from Hezbollah in, in uh, southern Lebanon. You also have the potential for a synchronized attack between Hezbollah and Lebanon, these slow-moving drones, which will take about four to five hours to get to the boundaries of Israel, with other actions by PMF and some uh, faster-moving missiles, uh, cruise missiles potentially, or even uh, larger range missiles. So those are quick. Those move about the size of a jet. If Iran is able to synchronize the slow-moving actions with the faster-moving actions, uh, you could see a very big uh, synchronized attack. Israel's not going to wait for all this. I would suggest that in their command and France control and headquarters right now, I established they've a clear got a lot principle. of patience. Whoever hurts us, we hurt them. We will protect ourselves from any threat and will do so with coolness and determination. I know that you citizens of Israel are also keeping your cool. I urge you to listen to the directives of the Home Front Command. Together we will stand and with God's help, together we will overcome all our enemies. And, uh... We have Rory Challens, who's joining us now from occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, Rory, I believe we're just going to show some pictures of there. The, uh, Rory, I'll come back to you in a second, but that is a live picture from uh, the joint uh, base Andrews over in the U.S., and that's the president uh, in the helicopter right there, President Biden. So arriving now at the joint base Andrews as this developing story is ongoing with Israel, with Iran launching drones towards Israel. Now we'll bring in Rory Challens. He's joining us from Occupied East Jerusalem, following all the developments from there for us. So Rory, uh, you've also been listening to the military radio in Israel. What have they been saying at this time? Well, what I think uh, people here would, would be very surprised if it was just a, a, a drone strike. And that's what is being reflected on Israeli military radio at the moment as well. If this is just a, a drone, then the expectation is that Israel's multi-layered uh, air defense system uh, could probably deal with it fairly uh, effectively. But 
they don't think that it will be just drones. They think that uh, Iran will most likely use drones as an initial barrage, uh, and then there might be a follow-up uh, with ballistic or cruise missiles. Now, yeah. Iran will have been watching uh, what's been going the drones on are in probably Ukraine very to closely over expand. the last... Uh, the drones are exactly slower that. moving. They it's use, a it's a way to expand uh, their iron do- deplete their iron dome if they the even get there. Obviously, Iran it might not even get there because Israel is saying that they are going to utilize the American. They're going to be utilizing the the uh, American resources in the region as well. Like their their goal is to take out as much of the anti air systems as possible, or deplete them as fast as possible, while simultaneously lobbing, uh, I assume, faster moving rockets. Missiles, uh, um, the, the the missiles, be their crews or ballistic, get through uh, and hit their targets. That's now, not true. They use different systems for bigger it, missiles. Israel I know. Has a, I know a they do. Much better system of air defense than Ukraine currently has. Uh, it has a multi-layered defense system, which includes Iron Dome, which we all know about because that gets set off very frequently uh, to deal with rockets when they come from he's going to describe it now in uh, in in lebanon and also he's going to talk uh, about the larger uh, the defense systems they have for larger uh, rockets defense systems that israel has as well called one called david sling and another one called arrow two and arrow three and See, together yeah. these make up a, a kind of uh, what's called a multi-layered air defense system which means they do deal with different uh, uh, threats in different ways now Israel's air defense systems have been well tested against things like uh, rockets, Katusha rockets, that sort of thing. Um, they're less well def- uh, tested against... Uh, oh, finally, we got the weirdos in here again. So you're rooting for Iran? Against, if this prompts a response uh, from the U.S., it could mean economic well. collapse and further escalation. Iran co- controls uh, oil experts. Millions could die. Well, it's not Israel's good that Iran escalated now. What the uh, do you mean? The kind of things if you're mad that Iran retaliated to Israel, you should be incredibly angry at Joe Biden and incredibly angry at Israel for literally getting it to this level for allowing Israel to feel comfortable in drawing the United States into this broader conflict. Iran didn't escalate. Iran retaliated. If Clarissa Ward on CNN can understand that fact, if Clarissa Ward on CNN is saying that Iran is trying to retaliate in an even fashion so that they do not draw an even larger response from Israel, you should be able to understand that too. Except the difference for you is that you're not in it to to make genuine assertions here. You're just in it to f- get a tr- clip out after trolling me so you can post it on a f- subreddit and be like, look, Hassan is in support of complete global collapse. He loves Iran. He's a fundamentalist Islamist terrorist lover. That's your goal. Iranian attack involves hundreds of drones. Senior Israeli official tells Barack Ravid as of now. It is wild to assume that a regional actor that has developed its weapons capabilities specifically for this purpose is not going to retaliate when their own soil is struck. The Damascus consulate compound is Iranian soil. Israel greatly escalated it. The reason why you didn't hear about it is because mainstream media barely covered it. It was a blip when it was a major move. The United States' response to Israel's major move was to say, oh, they didn't tell us that's really up that they didn't tell us ahead of time this is awful this is going to ruin this is going to possibly ruin the lives of many people in israel it's probably it's probably going to ruin the lives of many people in iran and would if depending on what happens after this depending on how this round of retaliation goes and how uh israel chooses to escalate and given that they've been violent and belligerent from the jump, which caused this retaliation to happen to begin with, I worry that this will have global consequences. I hope not. But the the next couple of days will determine uh, the future of this planet. It can it can be a tempered approach. The United States will rein in Israel and say, "Listen, they took pot shots back at you after you took pot shots. You just got to take the L here." Or it can mean full scale global conflict. It was announced saying that it was to protect U.S. forces and also to uh, deter this type of escalation from Iran. Now that this moment appears to be unfolding, we will soon find out how the U.S. is planning to respond to this to come to Israel's defense as its top officials have vowed. Okay, um, Heidi, I'll I have a little faith in the USA that can handle this appropriately. Again. The reason why this is happening today is because the USA has not handled it appropriately. If Biden, if Anthony Blinken, like he tweeted on October 8th, 
urged Israel to de-escalate and urged restraint for Israel. If that tweet had been kept up after that meeting with Hakan Fidan, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan, after Anthony Blinken and Hakan Fidan had a conversation on October 8, that was something that Anthony Blinken tweeted and deleted very quickly. If that was the attitude from October 8, it would have never gotten to this point because Israel would know that there are red lines. Israel would know that there are boundaries that they cannot cross if they demand unconditional support from the United States of America. Biden, on the other hand, reaffirmed his commitment to Israel, said that there were no red lines, symbolically bear-hugged Benjamin Netanyahu, and said, go all out. You've watched what Israel has done in the last six months after that. When you tell Israel no red lines, they're going to keep crossing the red lines that other regional actors have drawn. Understandable red lines that other regional actors have drawn. You let the dog off the leash. That's the point. From the sky, they also started jamming uh, GPS uh, around the country. And we understand from uh, Daniel Hagari that that is going on today as well, that there are now that these drones are incoming, that there is widespread GPS jamming going on to try uh, to dis- Israeli here just wanted to drop in and say, I'm very happy to now be in existential danger due to some old f army guy bombing some other dumb Iranian guy for shits and giggles. This is truly one of the moments of all time. I'm not that updated on this, so sorry if I said something inaccurate. Yeah, be safe, chatters. <sighs> The Israeli military command and control headquarters is placed right in the center of the densely populated stronghold of Tel Aviv. Yep. If the world is destroyed by a nation with restaurants called Hello Food, that is hilarious. I don't find it to be that funny. I mean, I get the irony of it, but it is wild to me that a nation uh, with the greatest exports being surveillance technology, ways, and techno music, like the absolute worst DJs per capita you've ever f seen, is going to bring about the actual demise of the entire uh, Western world is, is wild to me. Not going to happen, most likely. We shall see. But uh, holy f it is wild to think. Oh, here is our favorite Barack Ravid. Let's see Syria, what he has to say. That would give the greatest possible <laughs> chance for U.S. forces to intercept them, of course, depending on their route. Or they could try to come over uh, Saudi Arabia and through Jordan to try to <laughs> minimize the possibility of U.S. intercepts there. Though. Okay, official IRGC statement. Breaking, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps releases a statement. In response to the crime of the Zionist regime and the attack on the consular section of the Iranian embassy in Damascus, the IRGC Air Force hit certain targets in the territories of the Zionist regime with dozens of drones and missiles. That's what they said. I'll pick up on, on what my colleague Jeremy Diamond was talking about here. Israel itself has a layered aerial defense system. Its long-range aerial defense would be the Arrow 3 interceptor. That would intercept ballistic missiles and can work out of the atmosphere. We have seen that used, if I'm not mistaken, over the course of the past six months to intercept certain launches coming from uh, are coming down the Red Sea from the Houthis in Yemen. That's the long-range interceptor, Arrow 3. The medium-range interception system is David's Sling. That is very similar to the U.S. THAAD system. That is also stationed at different points in the country. And then the short-range interception system that we've seen used so many times, not only over the course of the past six months, but in the past as well, is Iron Dome. And that intercepts within uh, a few dozen miles here. Certainly that would be able to intercept uh, these drones. The Thank real you, question Qatari is, and this is what we've been speculating and wondering about, these drones will take hours to get there. Cruise missiles could arrive much faster, within a couple of hours perhaps, and then ballistic missiles are within a few minutes. So it still remains an open question, is this it? Or is there more coming and could Iran try to coordinate a number of different types of weapons to hit at the same time? That, of course, is, is what we're waiting to see here as these drones make their way over an, what will be an hours long process to reach their targets. All right. We know the beginning, the first chapters of this story so far. Let's go to Alex Marquardt right now. And Alex, you're getting some new information on, on the time frame cold. here. I'm How like long shivering. This might take I don't know why. Cold. Yeah, this is a really interesting statement from the White House, Jessica. The, the, the White House uh, putting a, a, essentially an expectation on how this is going to unfold in terms of the duration. Uh, they're saying that uh, it's going to be a number of hours. That's coming from a spokesperson for the National Security Council. Um, so they're not saying that this is going to be over very quickly. They're not saying that this is ex uh, something that's going to, to last for days. But there is an expectation um, that we have been talking about because of the weaponry that the Iranians are choosing, that this is going to take... Uh, several hours. It's almost midnight in Israel. Uh, that means that this could stretch into the pre-dawn hours. It will be very interesting to see 
Whether it lasts longer than that, of course, uh, there is a very distinct possibility that Israel then decides to retaliate uh, for this retaliation. And then we could really be off to the races in terms of an expanded conflict. But we aren't there yet. Jessica, we have been talking about this Iranian retaliation for almost two weeks now uh, since Israel struck that alleged consulate um, of the Iranian building in Damascus and killed seven members of the Revolutionary Guard, including uh, one of their senior most commanders who was in charge of the Syria and, and the Lebanon theaters. And so we knew this retaliation was coming and there was all kinds of speculation about what. Uh, yeah, I mean, they telegraphed it. They openly said that they were going to do it um, here. Uh, more updates. Fightux News says breaking Iranian drones began crossing Iraqi airspace and approach Syria and Jordan. The missile attack will begin soon. Iranian sources tell Iran's semi-official Fars News Agency. Did he say alleged consulate? Ability that Israel will then re retaliate against Iran itself. Now, this could have also been predicted because the attack that Israel carried out against that building in Damascus was carried out from Israeli soil. So what we're seeing here, I think, is a very calculated, very calibrated, but very significant retaliation by Iran. And Iran has been doing, I think, a, a, a pretty good job at telegraphing what its intentions are. Uh, the United States, a, a variety of European countries, Arab this countries, is Turkey, shocking. in the days this leading is up like to today, coverage that I'm not expecting. Been telling Iran, do not escalate this conflict. But at the same time, there was a recognition uh, that Iran would have to respond to that attack last week. They would have to save face. But despite what we're seeing right now, Jessica, there is no real sense that Iran wants to widen this conflict. And so it's going to be very interesting in the coming hours, as the White House has just said, to see what kind of weaponry they add to this. If it's just the drones. How much faster are missiles than drones? Is expected the missiles will follow up the drones? Uh, yes, they're much faster. Well, I'm just hearing from a senior U.S. official that the drones are I don't know in, how quote, valid unquote, this stuff is. The Syrian directions. army will defend. So they are worried it's going to hit multiple parts of Israel. And the official says, as Oren was reporting, that yes, the U.S. military is trying to track them to help Israel knock them out of the sky. The worry is that there will be so many headed to so many different parts that Israel's air defenses will be overwhelmed. Um, now, the question is, has Iran waited these two weeks to telegraph to Israel? So perhaps it is hitting, uh, per, uh, planning to hit military targets, uh, naval ships in Haifa and south in Eilat, uh, army bases across the country. Um, any of this could be seen as, you know, Israel hit its uh, a military target in Syria, Iran is striking back. But this is still extraordinary. Any attacks that have been blamed on Israel that have happened inside Iran have been covert. This is an overt operation, and it's going to trigger an international response no matter what's hit. Um, one Israeli uh, former intelligence official I was speaking to uh, said... Uh, she was going to sleep I, because she was expecting uh, many long days to come. Mm, yeah, many long days to come. All right, Kim, stand by. Chatters, go to there's going to be a lot of these, like, OSIN accounts. Unless it's coming from, like, Elant News in the chat. And even he might get stuff wrong. It's the fog of war. I have to repeat. Remember. It is, it, it, you know, there will be misinformation. You're probably inadvertently, without recognizing, spreading misinformation um, when you send me any link and every link that you see, for the record. Like, there needs to be confirmed reports. First of April, when Israel attacked that Iranian consulate in Damascus. Uh, but tonight, uh, they really are skyrocketing. Uh, we're seeing the airspace over Jordan, for instance, since being uh, completely closed. And in southern Lebanon, of course, which has been the scene of daily and often deadly exchanges of fire between Israel and Hezbollah, we've seen that this evening, uh, just before news of the, Isra the Iranian uh, launch took place, that there were some fairly intense Israeli air raids uh, along the southern Lebanon southern border. Uh, we're hearing now from residents down there uh, that there is an intense Israeli presence of warplanes uh, in the sky. I think probably the scenario the Israelis are worried about uh, is that there could be more done by Iran's allies and proxies around the region. Even though we've heard from 
officials, very, or rather sources very close to Hezbollah that the initial strike would be Iranian and exclusively Iranian. The worry is what, how will Israel respond to the Iranian response to the strike on the consulate in Damascus. And that's really where the danger lies. And certainly in terms of danger, uh, Lebanon is high on the list. Famously, by the way, Israel making, uh, making uh, the world very safe for Jewish people living in Israel once again. Just remember, remember that line that no Jew in the world would be safe without Israel? Doesn't seem so safe for the Jews living in Israel right now. Doesn't seem safe for anyone living in Israel or anyone living in America even. And it's kind of wild because this kind of belligerent action in the region was of course going to draw up some kind of response, some kind of retaliation. Weird. It's weird to think that like every single thing I've been saying for years about Israel is, is just basically uh, coming to fruition as Israel has felt more galvanized year over year over year especially after the Trump administration and definitely with the Biden administration as well. Absolute chaos happening to commercial traffic rerouting as airspaces are closed for Israel, Jordan, and Iraq. Mass diversion of flights are happening over Western Turkey over the past few minutes as Iraq closes one of the busiest airlines in the Middle East. Oh, here's another part, by the way. Uh, this I saw this on, yeah, this is, this is N12. Um, IDF bombed dozens of targets in three areas of Lebanon, according to N12 uh, news, while everyone is like looking at what is going to happen with the Iranian retaliation uh they might just be doing that specifically because they are worried about a hezbollah attack as well coming in uh in unison with the irgc jordan declares state of emergency likely many other drones and missiles may fly over jordanian territory i think they also said that they would uh that they would strike down uh drones and missiles that go over their airspace right yeah iranian shadow here some unofficial iranian news sources are speculating the drones will be in israel about two hours well we know what the it's longer than that i think it's going to take longer than that since it started didn't elant news say it was six hours we hear aircrafts everywhere here in jordan jesus christ do you think the idea of using this as a distraction now would they go ahead with rafa no dude this is not a distraction this is an expected consequence of the Israeli military action in the region, specifically striking the Iranian consulate compound in Damascus. That is Iranian soil killing Iranian officials. That is an act of war against a foreign adversary, a regional actor that demands retaliation. If anything, this is not about like invading Rafa. They're going to have their hands busy with this shit. So instead of invading Rafa, it, it actually is more so about drawing the United States into drawing the United States into the broader conflict now, which they have. They officially have um, N12 reporting that this third wave was launched from Hamadan and reports of interceptions already in Syria. Uh, there is now officially a third wave of Iranian drones launched at Israel. Holy shit. And the Lebanese chatter is asking, like, I'm in Lebanon. I don't know what uh, Israel will do. Uh, will this will this be bad? There's a high likelihood, considering that I often want to. Uh, I often say the madman theory is not not the Nixon madman theory, but like approaching regional actors is not rational actors, but instead belligerent, violent, bloodthirsty monsters leads to bad analysis. Okay, it does. And the reality is, for Israel, they are as close to uh, a belligerent, violent actor as you can possibly get. And even then, there is still some rationale behind the moves that they're making. The rationale, al albeit possibly a miscalculation, okay, albeit miscalculation, is, I assume, uh, bringing in the United States into, uh, uh, bringing the United States into Iran launched third round just moments ago. I know, I already checked your chat. We already covered that. Uh, yes, a third wave of drones have also been launched from Iran. Syria puts air defenses around Damascus and major bases are on high alert, according to Reuters. I said this a couple of days ago, but it does seem, I might be totally off base on this, but it does seem like given the fact that Iran very clearly spelled out that this would be a retaliation against Israel for the Damascus strike, that their response, while to you guys from afar, looks like, you know, overkill, so many drones, so many drones, uh, is most likely going to uh, try to strike an Israeli target of equal worth. The reason why they're sending hundreds of drones, of course, in three different uh, salvos is because 
uh, Israel, alongside with coalition forces, has tremendous defenses. So they're trying to get through it. That's the reason why. Most of those drones are not going to make it. Some of them will be intercepted above Syria. Some of them will be intercepted above Iraq. Uh, and, and some of them will be intercepted near Israel. Okay? You sound like you are condoning attacking Israel, a.k.a. civilian population. I genuinely don't understand how you can be at the precipice of World War III and still be interested in trying to farm a clip. Literally. That's wild to me. That is actually wild to me. You know, there are hundreds of drones uh, currently heading in the direction of Israel, and there are still chatters in here who are like, I can't wait to get a clip off here. I can't wait to get a clip off here this is gonna pop off on reddit i am i have never i have never oh my god just ban and move on people are freaks i know i wonder why he's actually a subscriber too well you can't clip anymore probably because probably not because he wants to avoid the top of the hour ad break probably he is a subscriber because he wants to clip shit and be able to post it on subreddits. But World War Three or not, a three minute ad break still comes at the top of the hour. Anyway. In a strike on their Iranian consulate. Now, the Iranian officials, including the Supreme Leader, said that this was a, a declaration of war. It was an act of war because they considered their consulate Iranian soil. And that this is the response. The Iranian um, representative to the United Nations had said over the past 48 hours that had the officials at the Security Council condemned Israel, Iran would have been satisfied with that response. But that did not happen. The United States, the UK, France, and they did not condemn Israel's act. They refused to take that step at that Security Council emergency meeting that was called within 24 hours of the airstrike in Syria. So that followed, um, what followed that was the officials here using the rhetoric that it is now in the hands of the Iranians to show a response to Israel because, of course, this is not the first time Israel has done something like this, carried out targeted assassinations on high-ranking officials of the Revolutionary Guard. There has been assassinations in Syria, um, in Iran, inside the country, uh, as well as, of course, the United States... Uh, when they killed Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad in 2020. So Iran felt like it was in a position that if they did not respond this time, then really this kind of behavior by Israel would continue indefinitely. And they couldn't afford She's to right. look weak, not only to their proxies. It the literally, region, why have any missile systems and any defenses if, if the other regional actor is just like relentlessly striking you and greatly escalating the conflict like there ha those are there for a reason and the reason is for this this is the reason going to use what they have to defend themselves when israel attacks them on a continuous basis from october 7th until now Israeli airstrikes have killed 18 members of iran's revolutionary guards in syria alone iran had res uh, responded by striking various different positions um, before until tonight. So this is how it is unfolding now as a result of all the events leading up to this. Okay. Dorsa, we'll let you go for... IDF update. So far, the Israeli military has identified more than 100 drone launches from Iran. The Israeli Air Force is tracking the drones and is preparing for additional waves of attacks, which may also include missiles. All right, let's hear what CNN the, is saying. Uh, the region is waiting to see when those projectiles reach Israel? Will they actually hit anything? As we know, Israel has the ability, along with the United States, to track them as they fly in the direction of Israel. And we've seen that we, whether it's the aero anti-missile system, the iron drone and other means, uh, whether Israel will be able to actually shoot all of them down before they actually hit the ground. Alex? Uh, Clarissa, to, to you, we're, we're showing live pictures of that Tel Aviv skyline. Um, one of the major questions is, of course, uh, what the targets are intended to be. Now, there is a sense that if uh, Iran does not want to escalate this, that they won't go, for example, for civilian centers. They won't try to target downtown Tel Aviv where you are. Obviously, we don't know what those targets are going to be. But what is the Israeli government uh, saying to its citizens uh, in order to stay safe? Uh, in a way that we might be able to glean w what it is they believe those intended targets to be. 
Well, essentially, they're saying this is a moment for caution. This is a moment to listen carefully to what you're being told to do. This is a moment not to panic. This is a moment for unity, as you heard Ben Wiedemann saying there. Schools are closed. Universities are closed. Camps are closed. No gatherings of more than 1,000 people. Everyone here being urged to keep a close eye on the news, on their phones, and pay attention to what they're told to do. I do think that the prevailing wisdom had been that Iran was telegraphing this for some time, that they had made it very clear they felt it was necessary to respond to Israel's attack on April 1st in Damascus that killed seven uh, Iranian officials, Quds forces, according uh, to the Israelis. Um, but now the question is, are they able to retaliate in a way that does not escalate? Are they able to find that so-called Goldilocks spot? And the fear is, of course, that given the backdrop, given the tensions, given the fact that we are really in a kind of unprecedented moment, that there are so many things that could go wrong, that there are so many potentially unintended consequences. I'm Israeli and I live in the north. I'm going to sit in my balcony and just watch the missiles and drones come in law. That very few people Be across safe, the bro. region the actually fuck? want to see. You have had uh, U.S. CENTCOM commander, uh, General Eric Carrillo here for two days. He just left talking about how the U.S. will work with Israel to deter uh, any kind of attack. But certainly there is a sense that this is the pressure. Bro, don't rely on the Iron Dome. These are not bathtub missiles. You know what I mean? These are not bathtub missiles being lobbed from Gaza made by like 17 year olds uh, using Israeli rocket parts. These are big boy drones and, and possibly big boy missiles to come as a follow up. Uh, is it, you know, this isn't like, uh, I mean, even when uh, Hezbollah ends up striking northern uh, Israel, uh, there is more of a threat than uh, the, the Hamas and Islamic Jihad rockets. This is, you know, this is the, the big dog in the region in comparison to all of the other regional, uh, all of the other regional operatives. These are not, this is no longer proxies. I mean, proxies are also involved, certainly, but this is the IRGC itself. So I would be very careful. Swear are trying to uh, make sure uh, that Iran and Israel essentially do uh, thread it carefully in a way to avoid this escalation. I want to get to Jeremy Diamond, who, who, who's in Jerusalem. Um, Jeremy, what have the Israelis been saying about how they may respond to uh, this Iranian attack? Because as we're seeing now, this is not proxies yet, perhaps, coming from other countries. This is an attack from Iranian soil, raising the possibility of an Israeli response against Iranian soil. Yeah, Alex, uh, there's no question that in recent days, Israeli officials have been trying to deter uh, this very scenario, a uh, direct attack <laughs> by Iranian forces launched. Yeah, no, they haven't been trying to deter that, soil to be directed honest. At Israeli soil. And indeed, in. Bro, what do you mean deter? They, no, they haven't. They've had one speed, dude, and it's go. They've been just hitting go speed non-stop since since October eight. Now, it's wild that like it wasn't enough to satiate their bloodlust to kill tens of thousands of Palestinians. That they had to also strike Beirut. That they also had to strike a Iranian consulate compound. Like, what are you doing? It's crazy. Every step of the way, I told you that it's saying that they are behaving in the most belligerent way possible it was ridiculous opening up multiple fronts deliberately is wild to me especially when considering that that was a major fear from the jump for israel was potentially having to fight hezbollah in the north possibly withstand attacks from yemen forces as well yemeni forces as well and then also iranian forces uh, the IRGC proxies that are in Syria and in Iraq. That was, that literally was the fear from American military analysts that like Israel's going to get uh, swarmed on all fronts and not be able to withstand this retaliation. Israel then followed the next six months in the most ridiculous, uh, it, it, by doing the most ridiculous you could imagine. Oh my God, the analyst numbers are growing, by the way. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is so nutty. It was never about self-defense.
There was no self-defense. There was no self-defense in this regard. Days now uh, preparing for exactly this scenario that is now currently uh, underway. A senior administration official from here confirming uh, that many drones have been uh, launched from inside Iran into Israel. They expect that number uh, to really be uh, just north of what we had uh, reported uh, coming into this. Uh, and just to underscore, of course, the gravity of this situation, uh, President Biden was set to finish out the weekend in Rehoboth Beach. He has now uh, cut that trip short and has just returned to the White House, uh, walking straight back into the Oval Office, where uh, later today we expect him to, of course, convene uh, his team of national security uh, advisors. And they, of course, in turn, have been in close contact with their uh, Israeli counterparts uh, in the region as well as all, as all of this uh, has unfolded. And we saw uh, moments ago the National Security Council saying in a statement that they expect that this attack is likely to unfold over a number of hours. You know, you take into account just the travel time of some of these drones. Uh, and yeah, we certainly expect that this is going to be a late night here at the White House with uh, the president continuing to get updated as this uh, situation unfolds. Uh, I do think it's just worth uh, noting a couple of things that we have been reporting uh, leading up to this very moment that's important uh, from here, our stance here at the White House. You know, U.S. officials had said that they expected that Iran would be directly involved in launching the, these attacks uh, into Israel, but they had also said that, the, it, that it is certainly possible that proxies and other affiliated groups uh, could also be involved. So there's that. Uh, we also know uh, that Iran was expected to attack multiple targets in Israel, but there could also be other targets, uh, other assets uh, in the region that are also targeted. So it could be uh, sort of further reaching than what we are currently aware of. Uh, and then, of course, the idea that the U.S. is ready and willing to intercept uh, any weapons, if feasible, oh as this uh, unfolds. So. Uh, you know, we saw uh, the U.S. moving uh, extra forces into the region uh, in preparation for all of this. So uh, this kind of work and preparation has been under day, uh, underway again uh, for days now. And I think it's just uh, hard to overstate how much this state-on-state uh, -state conflict between Iran and Israel was a scenario that the U.S. had so much hope to avoid, uh, given the possibility of Let me tell you one thing. I am not getting... Drafted, partially because I'm 32 years old, but also there is no f way I'm getting drafted to go and defend the genocidal apartheid state of Israel, okay?